has found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone. Inspired on Liberty Radio. In March 2022, after over 10 long years, we were blessed to receive a missionary visit from our founder, Bishop Edir Macedo. That meeting was unforgettable, and those who came were definitely inspired and renewed in their faith. The Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ is here to unite you with him. Receive the spirit of Jesus Christ. The message was simple. We must have a defined faith in our living God. When you manifest your faith, everything is possible for you. Faith is the spirit of God inside us. Bishop Macedo is returning to the UK for another visit, and this time around, we are excited as to what the Holy Spirit will bring to his people. Whether you were there or you missed out on his first visit, you do not want to allow anything to hinder you this time. Bishop Macedo's second missionary visit of 2022, Sunday, 30th October at 10 a.m., only at 232 Seven Sisters Road, Finsbury Park, London, N4, 3NX. Spread the word and invite your loved ones. Good evening, everyone. May God bless you abundantly and welcome to One More Monday. And I believe this week will be a blessing. And, and what a week we have ahead of us because this Sunday will be the Sunday of Strength all over the world in the UCKG. And in this Sunday of strength, God has blessed us with the visit of Bishop Macedo, who will be here to bring a word of God to us. I was saying to the people here on Sunday that even though the, the service that Bishop Macedo did here last time was in March, I still remember, I still have recorded in my mind the message that he gave there in the service. Because I believe God really spoke to us. And it will be no different this Sunday at 10 o'clock. We have many of our members from different churches will be here. And I want to invite actually uh, you who are watching us to bring with you on Sunday a friend, to bring a family member for the Sunday of strength. By the way, we have a lot of people here connected. We have here Tiwongi from Catford, uh, Pastor Renato from Liverpool, Carla from Nottingham, Tamiris from Bullring, Kevin from Liverpool, Sarah from Edmonton, Hirondina Tavares from Leeds. In fact, uh, people of Leeds, I will be going to Leeds to do a service there on Monday, Monday the 8th, I believe, if my memory doesn't fail me. I'll be there Monday night, uh, Monday the 8th of November, to bless the people there. Sabrina from Stratford. But I, I want to know uh, from you, uh, if you will be here with us this Sunday at 10 o'clock. Let us know here in the chat if you'll be with us here on, on Sunday. Look what the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 24, verse 10. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. How many times we have heard people say, I'm strong, Bishop. Pastor, I'm strong. Pastor, count on me for everything. No matter what happens, I will not abandon the faith. And many times, Pastor Miguel, these are the same people that when a problem arises, they say, Pastor, I'm thinking of giving up. I don't think I can hold on much longer. In reality, that person is lacking the strength that comes from the throne of God that is given by the Holy Spirit. Even though the, many people are in the church, but they still lack 
this strength and this is why Sunday all over the world will be the Sunday of strength and as we said we are blessed with the message of Bishop Macedo and the presence of Bishop Macedo who can speak about strength not only from the Bible because one thing is you speak about strength based on what you read in the Bible another thing is if you've watched and we all have watched uh, Bishop Macedo's movies nothing to lose one and two if we've read his books and I've read all of all of the the, the biography the the four books there's a fourth at the beginning we we see this that he not only spoke of strength but he lived this strength when he was persecuted when everything turned against him and this strength comes from the Holy Spirit and this strength is available Pastor Miguel for everybody not just for Bishop Macedo not just for me for you for the assistants but for everybody who has the Spirit of God in Sunday this is what we are proposing for people to receive the Spirit of God not just the strength of God not only on their lips but in their life so that this verse can become true if you faint in the day of adversity your strength is small we don't need strength for when the days are good we need strength for when the days are bad exactly is when the day is bad that the strength I have will be measured it's on the day of difficulties that we are going to show whom we truly are it's pretty similar Bishop to what we were talking about a few weeks ago two weeks ago that is on the moments of hardship that we are going to either smell the beautiful aroma of God or we are going to be smelling bad the strength is pretty similar on the difficult moments is when I need the strength of God the most and when I have the strength of God when I am possessed by the strength of God I will overcome in the difficult moments actually when we look at the Bible and Bishop Macedo's life shows us that nowadays the greatest testimonies of the Bible are victories that <clears throat> were conquered in moments of difficulties mm -hmm. because those men of God showed the strength that they had in God from God in the most difficult moments of their lives Bishop Macedo as you said is a living example that when you have the strength of God in you instead of fainting in the day of adversity you are going to turn the day of adversity your testimony that's right remember the strength of God is not for when things are smooth sailing the strength of God is for the day of trouble that's what the Spirit of God comes to do to make us stand in the day of trouble and like Pastor Miguel said here and we have been speaking about the past few weeks when we are the perfume of the Lord Jesus when we are squeezed and crushed by this world the perfume of God is released in our life when we are not then we show that it was the world that we had in us all along now we're gonna watch a testimony of someone who is a living witness of the result of being faithful to God in our tithe on Sunday the 6th we are going to be honoring God with our tithe and, and that day will be a division in the church a division of before and a division of afterwards because we are raising up a church of people who honor God from from that day if you were you know patchy if you were patchy to say the least in your faithfulness towards God from this day we are saying my Lord you can count on your church on your people to honor you no matter what let's see what happened to Ana Paula here from Finsbury Park as a result of being faithful in her tithe I'm Ana Paula Almeida and I'm a consulate officer. My life before I came to the church was a mess around. I couldn't be in a job for more than a year. Financially was unstable. I earn money but I spend a lot. The money just flies. My most uh, serious situation that I have lived was when I lost everything due to my ex-boyfriend. Uh, commit suicide and 
I had depression, I lost my job, and I thought I could um, find another job. In this period, I, I lost everything. Someone that I knew, that I knew in my workplace, invited me to come to the church, and I never accept, because I was more focused in earning money. And I, I didn't care. When I lost everything, I met her once more in the bus stop, and she told me, come, come to the church. We have a women's meeting at the time. And I said, okay. And I went to the women's meeting. I like it what I heard and I said I will give you a, a go because it was on Sunday a women's meeting and I start to to go to the church to her branch it took more or less a little bit six months for me to really to do what uh, what the men of God uh, said every time well the first time when I heard about the faithful tither I need for me to have the blessings of God, I need to obey. I'm going to do what he said. And at that time, I became homeless during this period that I had depression and lost job. I had some money, but the money gone. I didn't say anything to my, my family in Portugal that I, I was without work, without a house. I didn't have much money to, to give as a tither, but everything that comes into my hands, I will take and will be I will really um, take and give give to God. Every time I heard something, I tried to put in practice because that was the, the, the way that God can do his part as well. I need to do my part for God to do his part. If I didn't uh, do it, I couldn't have the same answer. When I heard about Malachi, that God says that we, if we bring to his house, the types, we lack anything. And I said, okay, I'm going to do it. The thing is, yes, works for me works and has been working until now. And this is, is as well the consequence for me to be able to ask God, or even when things are not planned or goes into plan, I say, but I'm a faithful tither, I know his promise. I know God will do, and I need just to trust. I know he, he will do it, and he, he, he he's been doing that. You know, several times I have this experience in my life about uh, blessings that I ask, and uh, okay, it's not now, but uh, later on. Or if it's not even later on, it's better. My vow with God, you know, <laughs> Uh, it is very special for me because uh, I, I, you know, I just have him. And uh, this is, again, in different occasions, you know, when you think you have friends and friends are not there, God is there. Well, when I start to have a pact with God as being a faithful tither, it is, you know, things are start to, to happening. Blessing situations that were unsolved and now is like, is, is moving forward. My life now, it's, uh, it's completely different, obviously. I'm more calm. I have a new job, the job that I, I was looking for. There is a purpose. Now I know how to handle situations. During this crisis, I have been honored by uh, as, as being a faithful tither. One of the things was during the pandemic, uh, you know, I wasn't working. I had a salary, an entire, a full amount of salary for three months. I wasn't working at all and I was paid full salary. The first fruits for me, it's, uh, it's a very important thing in my life. It is a beginning of everything, beginning of, of loyalty, respect. It's like a relation of father and son, you know, that nothing can break. And if you have this relationship with God, first fruits is incredible. You feel secure, you feel nothing. You can see like the mountain is trying to fall on you, but doesn't. <laughs> doesn't uh, lock you down because you have that pact with God, first Him and second you. The comparison between me before being a faithful tither and now is like I look someone and it's like, oh, she's losing, she doesn't, she doesn't know what she could have. I'm feeling very blessed, not feeling, I am blessed. I'm very grateful for the assistant who never give up on me. 
you know, insisting, inviting. When you know how to walk, you you walk faster, you know. And before, without without God, we don't know how to walk. And with God, you 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 can you can jump. <laughs> You know, uh, we can't go into details about Miss Ana Paula's job, but when she told me about how God opened the doors of that new job for her, it was really something that was a miracle. It was, it was a miracle indeed. But I, I really liked what Miss Ana Paula said. She said that the first fruits, knowing that you are faithful to God uh, in your in your tithe it gives you a security and and you know no one asked her to say this and this is how she sees the tithe this is how she sees her faithfulness towards God and how many people Pastor David they see the tithe as a burden they see the tithe as something that they if they could get out of they would but Miss Ana Paula she sees the tithe as her security it's like her safety net. No, no, because I am faithful to God, I can rest assured that he's going to look after me. Yeah. And and you have to remember, Bishop, that the tithe and presenting the first fruits is attached to a promise. Not that we are faithful tithers because of the promise. We're faithful because we want to be faithful to our God. But it is a promise, and that's where the security comes in. Mm -hmm. God has promised to take care of those who present to him their first fruits. And mathematically speaking, logically speaking, it doesn't make sense. You you present, you know, the first 10%, you're meant to have much less than what you would have if you didn't. But when a person understands that the promise of God, what it means for them, they give the first fruits knowing that even the 90% that they're left with, it's even more blessed than if they were to keep everything. Let's understand what what is indeed the first fruits. Well, the Word of God says in Malachi 1, 6, A son honors his father, and a servant his master. If then I am the father, where is my honor? When we present our tithe, our faithfulness to God, we are honoring God. You're not, you know, delete from your memory the sentence paying tithe there is no such thing as paying tithe to pay for something is when you're when you're buying something that you know you you want to keep the tithe is returning to god something that or, that was always his in the first place and what we were explaining here on sunday is that a lot of people, because they don't see the tithe as something that honors God, that it's them honoring God, they are inconsistent with their faithfulness. In fact, uh, let me rephrase myself. You can't be inconsistent with your faithfulness. You either are faithful or you are not. <laughs> there's, no, there's no in between. And so, you know, we, we have uh, many people who are intermittent in their, in their tithe. And, and that's, that's a lack of honor to the living God. When I have made a vow of faithfulness, I don't need to be reminded of this vow. When a person gets married on the altar and they make a vow of faithfulness to their spouse, they don't need to be reminded. This is something that is at the forefront of your mind. You put that person first. You know, you... If you're going to do anything, you need to consult that person. You put, and that's why many marriages go wrong. Many marriages go wrong because people don't understand the, the, the values of how honoring a marriage is. Because when you honor your spouse, you put that person first. After God, it's that person. And many people put their friends first, the job first, the family first. And that's why a marriage doesn't last for a marriage to last that person has to be honored ahead of everybody else and with God is no different when I put God first when I honor him then he is number one 
And I don't need to be reminded. And that's the message, Pastor Miguel, that I, it's important that people keep inside of, of them. If a person needs to be reminded of returning that tithe, if the person needs to be told about it, then that person is not faithful. From the moment you make a vow of honoring your father, that is it. It's between you and him. This is why in the UCKG there is no uh, control of who gives tithe and who doesn't. It's, it's between the person and God. Our, our role is to teach the word of God. We teach the person how to be faithful and from that moment the person makes their decision it's, and it's between them and God. There has to be the, the, the fear. As the Bible says, the fear of God is the beginning of all wisdom. Right? So when the person fears God, this re has this reverence towards God, the pastor doesn't need to remind them, no one needs to, to tell them, they don't need a reminder on their phone because it's something that they deal with reverence and fear. Despite of what happens in their lives, they know that God is first. They took a decision to put Him first. We know, Sir Bishop, in those days, those people God was talking to, like he's talking to us, were people who knew what they were doing, but they were divided. God could have asked them anything, but he touched on the subject honor, on putting him first. People who were not serving God as God wanted and deserves to be served. They were unhappy with the way their lives were, but they were not considering about serving God, about the way they were dealing with God. You see that what God was asking of them, that question is very powerful. If I am your father, where is my honor? All that God is demanding from us is to set him first as the center of our decisions. When God is first in my life and I can't be deceiving myself, he is the center of my decisions. The day I chose to put God first and start honoring him, he became the center of my decisions. Every decision that I had to take, I would consult, is this going to honor God? Mm -hmm. What will God think about that? I didn't need the people to remind me anymore because that was within me. I wanted to honor God despite of what I would get back. I wanted to honor Him. And this point is very important. Despite of the promises He makes of what you will receive because we cannot honor him under false pretenses we have to honor him for the f for the only reason that we want to honor him because a son wants to honor his father look i would like right now to say a prayer for you that you want the strength of the holy spirit this sunday will be the sunday of strength and you want the same strength that the spirit of god gave to david to overcome goliath to, uh, you know, to the men and women of God to overcome the, the battles, the struggles that they had in the past. The same strength that the Lord Jesus had to carry the cross. The same strength that the Apostle Paul and, and, and the, 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 the disciples, the apostles in the primitive church had to face death and remain faithful. You want that kind of strength. The Holy Spirit can give you the strength. And Sunday, when you are here with us, in, in the headquarters, in the meeting with Bishop Macedo, you will receive this strength. Let's talk to God right now. My Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I present to you right now all of those who are in need of strength here in this world. And I would say that all of us are, myself included. Because even those who have your spirit, they understand that strength comes from you, from the living God. But there are some who need strength more than others. My Lord, there are those who are going right now through some of the most difficult times of their lives. People who have lost a loved one, people who have a loved one in hospital, people who have received the news that they've become redundant from their job, 
They were fired from their job. They lost their security. But like Ana Paula said, the first fruits are my security. Let this person remember that you are the safety net. You are the security. My Lord, like you filled your servants with your spirit and they had the strength to face the battles in this life, the, the, the difficult situations in this life, you, you led them to go forward and overcome all the situations that they were facing. Give strength to this person as well, my Lord. This person who wants to never turn their back on the decision they made to follow you. They never want to go back to the world. My Lord, be with this person, strengthen this person, that, and that this Sunday, those who will be here with us, and even those who will not, who for some reason are, are, are watching us from, from very far, that this Sunday your spirit may strengthen them. Those who are watching us from abroad, that there in that church, your spirit may enter their life in the name of the Lord Jesus. We bless them. We bless these people in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 This is it. And I want to ask you, especially this Sunday, bring with you someone to the church who is in need of the strength of God. Someone who's thinking of giving up, someone who's at their wit's end, someone who's given up on life, bring that person with you to the church this Sunday, in, this, in the, the Sunday of strength, because when the man of God there from the altar is passing the faith, the Spirit of God to those who believe, those people who will be present will receive the strength of God. All right? This week we'll be talking more about faithfulness, about honoring God, about strength. Join us every night, 10 o'clock, live here from our studios. We'll be back with you again tomorrow. May God bless you. Bye-bye.